Now, if we go back to, you know, just some other thoughts out there, if you guys haven't thought about this stuff, um, I mean, just simple things like say you go out to dinner with your family, uh, choose wisely on where you sit. Like, would you want to have your back facing the door or would you rather, you know, face the door, see who's coming in? I mean, it's kind of like, you know, mafia times, I guess, up in Chicago where you know, they always they never have their back to the door. They always see who's coming in. And I mean, yeah. that's, that's a great point to have for a, a defensive standard. Well, it, the uh, where you sit, first of all, know where the exits are. Um, and when I when I when I'll go out with my kids. My kids are all grown now, but you know we'll go out and we'll be sitting there, and I'll say, "Quick, tell me where the nearest exit is that we didn't come in." You know, and they'll say, "Over there in the corner, right here to my left, or what have you." Because if there is an emergency or a crisis, 99% of the people in the restaurant, the the store, the building are going to run for the door that they came in, mm-hmm. and then you're going to be in this log jam of people. So you're going to go to that door and just get out real easy, things like that. But yeah, I I feel really uncomfortable if I can't see. Um, basically the, the traffic patterns, people coming in and out and so forth. I don't like that. Um, doing the, the bodyguard thing for as long as I did, uh, I've kind of got the sixth sense for that. If you need, people say, what about my phone? And we call phones on, on the radio show, we call them attention vampires because everybody does this. They pick up their phone, they go, and they totally lose it. I say, if you need to answer your phone in public or you need to use your phone, or you need to send a text or whatever, I mean, we do. Put your back to a wall. Put your back to a wall or a shelf or something where nobody could actually come up behind you and lift the, the device up to your face so that at very least you still have peripheral vision mm-hmm. and you can see what's going on around you. Watch people sometime. Put your back to a wall and just quietly watch people and see how many people walk back and forth by you and they're so oblivious that you could reach out your hand and touch them and they would have no idea until you actually did it. Uh, and we play. I, I started my kids playing uh, games years ago. Uh, we're like down here in Mississippi. We have these uh, Southern Bell T-shirts, mm-hmm. and women wear these Southern Bell T-shirts. And there's like 800,000 configurations of Southern Bell T-shirts in different colors. It's almost like the official Walmart shopping wear of the South. So <laughs> when we would get, when we'd be out, I'd tell, we would start counting and see who could come up with the most Southern Bell T-shirts. You know, at the end of the shopping session. And you say, well, that's silly. The people in Southern Bell shirts aren't going to be attacking you. No, but if you're paying attention to that, if you're looking, then what are you also noticing? You're also noticing things or people that are out of place. Instead of just looking down at your feet or your phone, your head is up and you're paying attention to your surroundings. And you can do it wherever you live. I mean, you live in Green Bay, look for Packers jerseys or look for Patriot shirts or look for whatever. Mm-hmm. But teach your kids. It doesn't have to be this doom and gloom thing. Make it a game. Uh, you know, I made it a game with the kids, and so they're always paying attention to what's going on around them, and they just started doing it without it being some kind of a, you know, a sinister scheme. Yeah, or randomly, you know, just ask, you know, what was that person wearing that just that just passed us? And, I mean, that's just a great, you know, observation getter. Yep. Awesome. Now, what do you think of online training? Uh, I think online training is, there when it comes to training and information, now, when you say, when I say training, generally I'm talking about you going and being with a, an instructor who can watch you and see what you're doing. Uh, but when it comes to information gathering, uh, I, I read. I, I still read a lot. I read a lot of books, uh, watch videos. Um, do, can, you can do, um, I guess, proctored online training and so forth. And that's good because it gives you something to think about. A lot of times. People will watch, if they watch a video or they, or they read a book or read an article or what have you, they may get that little uh, golden nugget. They're like, oh, you know what, I never thought about that before or I never thought about it in that way before. And it gives them inspiration. You know, that's, I know that not everybody can go to training all the time. So what we do is generally you're using, you want to use the books and the DVDs and the video material as a supplement for your live training. And that's what we do here. Like for the armed living class, what we do as student of the gun is when people sign up for the armed living class, when they sign up for the class, they immediately get the online training video armed living, and and it's it's a uh, a downloadable deal or I'm sorry, it's a direct streaming deal where they, you get a code anyway. You go in there, you watch it. So before you even come into the classroom to sit down, you've already watched the 45 minute training DVD, so you have some idea about what we're already going to be talking about. And you're like, okay, that sounds familiar because. You know, when it comes to training or education, reinforcement is very, very important. Repetition and reinforcement. Uh, so 
you know, that's going to give you an idea. And maybe you you have some training or a little bit of background, uh, but you want to keep sharp or refreshed. It's like doctors and nurses and medical people. They you know they went to medical school in 1984, but things aren't the exact same today as they were in '84. So they're continuously doing refresher training, and that's uh, where videos and books and articles and so forth can can come in. Now, uh, sadly, uh, I can't tell you whose stuff you should. I mean, I can tell you whose stuff you should you should review. Because of the age of the internet, there's a hundred thousand experts out there, people that are gun enthusiasts. I own a gun and I know how to shoot it, so I am therefore, and I have a Facebook page, so I am now a gun or a gun expert. And it, it, I guess it's not really new; just the 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 internet has amplified it. Uh, I would say this: if you're talking to somebody about being your trainer or what have you, have you ever carried a gun? Has anyone ever paid you to carry a gun? Paid me, yeah, like a police officer, uh, you know, a member of the military, a bodyguard. Not, not that everybody who's a cop is an expert in guns because they're not. Not everybody who's in the military is an expert in guns because they're not. But you, you need to set some type of a standard. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, have have you ever been paid for your words? Like paid for my words? Like, yeah. Have you? Has anyone ever actually paid you to write anything? The, did you read this? The article, the death of the editor. I did not. Shame on you, but you can fix yourself because you can go to studentofthegun.com, you can click on the blog section, and you can read it. Uh, we used to have this really a, a serious vetting process in the United States where people just couldn't put on their own expert crown and go out amongst the masses that other people actually had to vet their work. Uh, but that's gone away with the age of the internet, and so, and it doesn't matter whether it's guns or cars or whatever. There's everybody who has a who knows how to work WordPress is now an expert. Mm-hmm. Now, now you were you were talking about a uh, a DVD that you guys have. Uh, where can people mm -hmm. find that DVD? Okay, go to studentofthegun.com, and if you go to studentofthegun.com, you can click on. I've got, I've written several books. Uh, are you familiar? Uh, I I believe right. one of them. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure about the other ones. Go ahead and go ahead and let everyone. Okay, well, I, I've written several books, uh, and you you can order most of them uh, online. Uh, you can order our, our training. We, we work through a company called Gumroad for direct delivery uh, electronic uh, digital material. So you can either get the, the you can read the books direct uh, direct streaming or direct download uh, the video Armed Living Concealed Carry in an Uncertain World. Uh, you can get that on Gumroad as a direct streaming video. You can watch it from any device. Uh, we have a physical one as well for people that still want to actually buy a disc and stick it into a machine. But let, let's face it, most people in today's world want to just buy something and watch it on their laptop or their or their iPad or whatever. Uh, same thing with the books. The, the latest book that I wrote is called The Patriot Fire Team. And we made it available as both an e-book with links and all that jazz in it. And we just recently uh, released a dead tree version made out of paper uh, because we got both people, you know, both kinds of people want that. But uh, yeah, I'll just you know real quick about Patriot Fire Team. The reason that I wrote it, the reason we came up with the concept is there are hundreds of thousands of people in the United States today that are looking around. They see the landscape. They they watch the news. You know, they get online and they see, they realize that the United States of America is not as strong as it as it should be as it once was. They realize that that things are not going the way they should be. They have that gut instinct. And they come to the realization or the feeling that, that they should be doing something. Like, I, I should be doing something besides voting once every two years. But what can I do? You know, I, I saw that Doomsday Prepper show, but I, I don't really want to be like those guys. I'm not a crazy, paranoid person. No, you're not a crazy, paranoid person. You just know that things aren't right and that you should be doing something. And I put together, we came up with the concept of the Patriot Fire Team. And I wrote the book because we had like hundreds and hundreds of questions. I thought, well, I'll just answer them all in a book versus, you know, one at a time. But if you're out there and you feel like, hey, I know things aren't right in America. I'm a citizen. I'm not, you know, SF. I'm not, you know, SWAT guy. I'm just, I'm a person. And I know that I should be doing something to secure my family and my community and my state. Pick up the book, read the book. And it's basically, it's a kind of a how-to guide uh, to better preparing and securing your family and your community, and it gives you something proactive to do 
versus just sitting around on Facebook complaining about you know whatever is in the news today. It gives you something that you can actually do, uh, and that's what we need. Is we need people that are going to be proactive and they're going to take responsibility for their own lives and families and communities versus people that just sit around on social media and complain. I mean, obviously we like to do that, but you got to do more. Yeah. Awesome. Now I know you're a busy man. And before I let you go, I, I'd really like for you to, you know, maybe recommend to these guys, what, you know, what, what would you recommend for everyday carry? Not necessarily just a gun, but you know, everything. Oh, like, like what does, what does, do you need to have on your body? Yes. All right. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I have here. Here's my dresser in the morning. I, I have a, a fire. Well, actually I have two firearms uh, because if you have, if you need one, you probably need to, uh, a, a pocket knife, some type of a sharp holding pocket knife. If you're an adult male, women, this, this goes for you too. But if you're an adult male and you're not, and you're leaving the house without a knife on you, you're wrong. Fix yourself. Um, number two, a, a flashlight, a compact but powerful flashlight, because sometimes you need to see in the dark, and that's all there is to it. Uh, I also, obviously, some form of communication, which is easy because everybody takes their phones with them everywhere. Some type of an alternative use of force tool. I've got a can of pepper spray in my pocket right now. But if you don't do that, then you could obviously use the flashlight as an alternative use of force tool. And something I would recommend that if you're serious about this whole, like, why do you carry a gun? Because you want to take life or to save life? Well, the responsible answer is I carry a gun because I want to save life. I want to save my life, my family's life, my children, my wife, and so forth. So, but do do good guys bleed too? Yeah, sometimes good guys do bleed. And could you die from something other than a you know a violent assault? Could you die from a rollover car crash? You know, you're driving down the road and somebody's texting, they shoo, high speeds you know run into you. Do you have the ability to stop your wife, children, whatever loved ones from bleeding to death while you're waiting for the ambulance to arrive? Um, while well, I have my gun. Okay, you can shoot the wound closed. Yeah. You know, someone smashes into you, your car rolls over, it's in a ditch, your 12-year-old daughter has a partially amputated right arm, there's blood pumping out of it, and you have your Kimber with hydroshocks and an extra magazine. Okay, what are you going to do? You're just going to hold her hand and watch her bleed to death? Because I tell you what, if she's got a partially amputated right arm and the ambulance is going to be there in eight minutes, all they're going to be able to do is put her in a plastic bag. So what are you going to do? Do you have the ability and do you have this, the tools uh, to do something about that? And uh, we, we, I've been addressing this for, for a number of years, but I'm trying to get people, if you're an armed citizen, you need to be able to save life. And sometimes, and chances are of you needing a medical kit or a first aid kit or first aid knowledge is, is probably a lot greater than whipping out your Roscoe and shooting the bad guy. Yeah, definitely. You know? So what I've got on me every day is I've got a gun, a knife, a flashlight, pepper spray, I've got a communication device, and I have what's called a pocket lifesaver, which is uh, a small trauma kit that is enough to get me started and to save a life while I'm waiting for the ambulance to show up. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Paul. I really appreciate you coming on this call with us. Uh, everyone, this Thank is you. Paul from Student of the Gun. Go ahead, check him out. Facebook, YouTube, um, check out his videos, check out his books, all that good jazz. Uh, yeah. Go to studentofthegun.com and branch out from there. Awesome. I'll talk to you later, man. You have a good one. Thank you.